I've been recording The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton and it's a really fantastic historical novel with lots of different strands to the story. We are in different time periods during the book that spread from the 1800s until the present day. So it's a really vibrant mix of time periods, of characters, of places, and it just makes, hopefully, for a really fantastic listen. A lot of the book is set in the countryside, so you do get a fantastic contrast between the sort of dirtiness of London in the 1800s, the cobbled streets and the fog and how things were then, and the sort of clean and peaceful time in the countryside over different time periods. So it's a real journey you go on with the book, and then you sort of get a real great payoff at the end, because all these little intricate things and, and intricate story points weave into one another. I think my favourite of the six strands of the story is the one with Birdie as our protagonist. She's the character that, that brings all the stories together at the end of the novel. And even though she is a character that's alive in the 1800s, she's also sort of quite modern in a way. She's very determined, she's very cheeky, she has to fit into lots of different walks of life so she's quite a chameleon as well which is really fun to play and she's very independent and very intelligent in her own way although she's not well educated. There are a lot of different characters in The Clockmaker's Daughter and that's always a challenge because you want to try and find a different voice for each character just so the listener can differentiate between you know obviously who's speaking. Not just the accent, but also maybe I'll try and switch up characters by using sort of a different intonation or a different speed at which they talk depending on the energy of the character, whether it's a child or an adult, whatever their personality might be. His passion, his blinding faith in whatever he professed was one of the things I fell in love with. I used to love books as a kid. I think I started with, as lots of children did, with Roald Dahl. They're the books that I really remember sort of first falling in love with. They're just so evocative and cheeky and as a child all those sort of things that you're not supposed to do and say, all the characters did them. And then growing up on the North Yorkshire Moors, I always loved Wuthering Heights, it was one of my sort of all-time favourites. My parents were avid readers, still are, they still have beautiful bookcases all over the house filled with lovely old editions of all the classics and modern day stuff as well. I've completely fallen in love with audiobooks. A, recording them, I've done about seven since last year, and B, listening to them. It's a luxury now, you know, to sit and read a novel. So the fantastic thing about an audiobook is you can listen to it while you're driving, you can listen to it on your commute if you're too tired to sort of read the words, and it still, you know, gives your imagination that, that boost that it, that it does if you're reading something, you know, in the same way. We came to Birchwood Manor because Edward said that it was haunted. It wasn't. Not then. It's a very different discipline, recording an audiobook to filming a TV show or a film, or even being on stage at the theatre. It's just you in a studio telling a story. And I think people either really enjoy that process or they really don't like it. I found I love it. So there's something really nice to me about just sitting with my cup of tea in a studio and just being let loose to just tell a story. That's what's lovely about, you know, going to the library or something because you can open these books and as soon as you crack open the pages, it's not only the story that's there, but it's the story of whoever else has read this book before you and how many people's lives it's touched. And I think there's something really compelling and, and powerful about that. Once you get into the flow of it in the studio, it's, it's actually lovely because you are just seeing everything that you're saying. I always feel like if I'm seeing it in my mind's eye as I'm reading it, then hopefully the listener will as well. I don't have to learn any lines. I could just roll in in my jeans and my jumper and sit and just tell a story. And it's really um, brought it home to me actually, how passionate I am about story and whether it be a novel or a TV program or a film, stories are so important to, to us human beings and just that sort of feeling of connection that you can have with a character or an author is something that really touches a person and um, it's, it's a really powerful experience to, to read or listen or watch something that you, that, that you have an emotional response to so I've really enjoyed just being part of the story.